Okay. So today we're going to see a very important uh, subject where uh, all the Christians uh, are much uh, waiting because uh, we are living in the very last days, uh, almost in the days where we see a lot of signs uh, regarding the second coming of uh, Lord Jesus Christ uh, taking place in this world. But uh, before the second coming of Jesus Christ, what should actually come? If you see in the Bible, it uh, is the Antichrist. The Antichrist has to come and uh, first uh, he has to come and then only uh, you see the second coming of Jesus has to happen. And if you see a lot of signs and all, then uh, it is very important for us to study about the Antichrist in the Bible. So what does the Bible say about Antichrist? So let us see today from the scriptures. So let us read uh, one verse uh, regarding Antichrist uh, in uh, Second Thessalonians, second chapter, verses one to four. Gopal brother, can you read? Yes, brother. Second Thessalonians two, verse uh, one to four. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he as God seated in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Yes. So this uh, uh, second Thessalonians second chapter Apostle Paul gives a detailed and a very clear picture of the Antichrist. He says before the great and terrible day of the Lord second advent first uh, what should happen is that uh, should the Antichrist uh, should be revealed it seems. He says First, except uh, there come a falling away first. First, uh, there should be a falling away. And then the man of sin be revealed. And the son of perdition who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God is himself. So he will come and sit as a God or that is worshipped. But he as a God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself uh, that he is God. This is the thing that the Antichrist is going to come. He is going to sit uh, on this world and uh, he is going to claim to be the God of this world. And if you see, the uh, general concept is that uh, he, uh, many people believe that he is going to rule for three and a half years as a God on this earth. And all people of this world will worship him and he will sit uh, as a God in the temple of God, it seems. Dear brethren, today the temple of uh, God is actually, uh, the reference uh, is for the temple at Jerusalem. See, the person, you see, an uh, individual man, a human being, so he will uh, go and sit uh, in the temple of Jerusalem and uh, claim to be God. Not only that one, everybody of this world, uh, you see, they will all accept him, worship him as God, and he will rule for a period of nearly three and a half years, it seems so. So, and not only one dear brethren, just think about uh, today's condition in the world. Today, we are living in a very modern uh, society. Uh, people have uh, only less of uh, superstition, beliefs and all. Not everybody has, uh, you see, uh, belief on God, dear brother. Many people are so... Uh, uh, living in a worldly way that they don't even bother about God and don't even worry about God. You see, they all uh, don't respect uh, God at all, dear brethren. And uh, moreover, the people uh, today are very knowledgeable, you see, very intelligent. So, they can't be deceived very easily so that uh, all the people of this world go and worship a single human being as God. You see, dear brethren, actually, if you see, uh, the scriptures, what here uh, tells about Antichrist, you see, uh, many of the people who were living before, like Alexander Great, Napoleon or Caesar, they could not achieve even 10% or 15% of what are told about Antichrist. 
while they were living in a superstitious period. They were living in a period where people were uh, totally blinded in false belief. But uh, now people are not like that. Uh, then is it possible for a person, for a man, to do all these things at your brain? And moreover, the temple. He says, uh, he shall sit on the temple at Jerusalem. He shall sit in the temple and claim to be God. They put in the temple at Jerusalem. You see, it took nearly 46 years to construct the first advent of Christ. Okay? And Jesus says that one in John 2.20. Okay, let us take that to brother. Those days, there was no technology. But now there's a lot of technology. Even if you take so much of technology, is it possible for build a temple at Jerusalem? Today, there's no temple. There is a you see, uh, a doom of rock, that is a Muslim mosque there, demolish that one, the construction temple, and just in a fraction of three and a half years, a person come and sitting there and claiming to be God and everybody starting to worship him. Is it practically possible? We'll all worship God. You see, if somebody goes and sits as a God in the temple of Jerusalem, will the Jewish people ever keep quiet? Huh? Just think, dear brethren, when Jesus claimed that he was the son of God, everybody took stones to stone him and uh, push him down from the hill, dear brethren. And today, uh, that uh, mosque place, that uh, temple place is actually uh, constructed uh, with a you see, Muslim mosque there. Muslims uh, you see, they have their uh, regular prayers in that uh, temple. And we know that it's a very, uh, you see, holy place in the, any sacrilege. And that place, the Mohammedans uh, will never tolerate it. Then, uh, is it practically possible for a man to come and destroy this temple and sit there and claim everybody's uh, worship? Uh, and uh, moreover, they have <clears throat> It also tells that uh, Antichrist will come and put a triple six uh, on their uh, head uh, and their hand. Uh, you see, dear brethren, uh, there are uh, so many suggestions uh, regarding this triple six. Many people claim that uh, it is a barcode number three. You see, uh, dummy uh, blank barcode stands represents 666. So that is, uh, uh, you see, uh, triple uh, six. So whoever doesn't have this barcode, Nothing can be sold, nothing can be purchased in this world. That's what uh, you see. Many people hmm, believe, and still, some people believe that uh, it is the uh, uh, minute uh, a chip that will be implanted uh, in our body inside the hand. You see, uh, this is the mark of the beast, uh, they claim this is the mark of the antichrist, uh, and uh, or else uh, they'll put a chip. Uh, Huh? on the head uh, so that everybody can be tracked. Uh, you see, dear brethren, this is, uh, uh, many people uh, think that uh, this is the triple six, uh, the antichrist. Dear brethren, today we are living in such a world that, uh, you see, uh, people are uh, quite knowledgeable about triple six. So hence, if you say, nobody buys a number which is having triple six. Take it for a vehicle number or a bus number or uh, take it for any hotel number. Or even the mobile numbers, nobody will purchase because they are very well aware that the triple six is the number of the Antichrist. And moreover, dear brethren, will anybody, you see, come and take the seal on their head? If anybody comes and gives them a seal of triple six, a little steel on the head and the hand, nobody will definitely take the brethren. Today, the people don't even have respect to their family, the wife and the children. You see, they are quite disobedient. Huh? In such a way, can we claim that all these wicked people who are living now, that they look out for a man, worship man as a God. Is it practically possible? Let us read a few verses. What does Apostle Paul say about the last days? First Timothy 4, 1 to 3, Buddha. Can read with Can somebody read? First Timothy 4, chapter 1 to 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall deceive, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to 
seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with, uh, with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats uh, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. You see, dear brethren, this verse clearly says that in last days there shall be no more good doctrines. Uh, you see, the people will uh, draw away from faith, it seems. Uh, they move away from faith, uh, you see, and uh, they will uh, listen to the doctrines of devil, it seems. Uh, if the doctrines of devil are going to come, uh, how longer can we wonder that the people will uh, start worshipping a man as God? Uh, you see, Read uh, Second Timothy third chapter one to four, brother. Second Timothy third chapter one to four. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. See, lovers of pleasures uh, more than lovers of God. <laughs> Nobody will love God, it seems. Uh, in such a case, can we expect uh, all the world to go and worship one man as God? Uh, dear brethren, today people don't have fear of God at all. Eh? Then how can we just blindly believe not in the coming days, sir. You see, a person will come and he will sit in the temple of Jerusalem and he shall rule for three and a half years as God. And everybody will start worshipping him as God. Dear brethren, you see, Satan is the god of this world. He's very cunning enemy. He knows how to deceive the people. Simply by showing all these things which are not scriptural, he is trying to divert the mind of the people from the real Antichrist. <laughs> Therefore, it is important for us uh, to study who is the Antichrist, what is the meaning of Antichrist from the scriptures. <laughs> you see, these are weird ideas outside the scriptures. But we need to understand what does the Bible say regarding it? What does the scriptures say regarding it? This is very, very, very much important. So, let us read what does the Bible say about Antichrist. Apostle Paul calls it as a man of sin, the son of perdition. Read 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Home brother, can you read? 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Uh, home brother, are you there? Brother, yes, uh, read brother. Second mm -hmm. Thessalonians 2 7 2 3. Second Thessalonians 2 3. Um, let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come except they come of falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of Ordi Pedicson. See, the son of man, perdition, the man of sin. You see, it's called as the various names given to the Antichrist. It's called as man of sin, son of perdition. Again, in verse 7, it is called the mystery of iniquity. Uh, Ashish Pita, read brother. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. See? A mystery of iniquity is already working. Again, in verse 8, it is called as the wicked one. Read with the verse 8. Uh. And then shall that the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. See, then shall the wicked one be revealed. The wicked. That is also the name given to the great antichrist system. Okay? And uh, you see, Jesus refers to book of Daniel and tells it is the abomination that maketh desolate. Gopal brother, can you read Matthew 24, 15? When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, 
stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Let him understand. You see, abomination that make it desolate. So therefore, these are the various names given to Antichrist in the scriptures. So first of all, before studying the Antichrist, who is the Antichrist, we need to understand the actual meaning of Antichrist as per the scriptures. You see, as per the Bible. See, anti means what? See, anti means someone who is against. Correct now? So, Antichrist means someone who is against Jesus Christ. Now, who is against Jesus Christ? Which is the group of people who are against Jesus? Can you tell me? Can somebody tell me? Who are the people who are against Jesus? Jesus. Hmm. Um, hmm. Correct. Who brother? Kapal brother? Muslims. Muslims. Then Hindus, Buddhists, everybody. So except the believers, the Christians, everybody are against Christ. See, this is one of the meaning of anti-Christ. But there is also one more meaning about the, the meaning, you see, about anti-Christ. You know what is that one? I'll give you an example. See, what is the meaning of anti-nationalist? Can somebody tell me? What is the meaning of anti-nationalist? What does it actually mean? Opposite of nationalist, opposite of who, uh, the one who loves nation. Opposite of nation. You see, huh? Hindi, in Hindi they call it as Desh Drohi. Correct now? Now you tell me what is the meaning of Desh, the Desh Drohi or anti nationalist? Come, brother, tell me. Um, I mean, uh, in, ne in Nepali, also, same meaning like Desh Drohi. Also. Hmm. Same word we use. Tell me, tell me in Nepal only. Gopal Bhatta, tell me. What is the meaning of anti nationalist? Is against the nation? Yes, against the nation. So, who is against the nation? For like, for example, if you take India, who is against India? Tell me, who is against India? China. China. <laughs> Uh, Pakistan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, yeah. anybody you can take. See, Pakistan. So, is uh, Pakistan an anti nationalist? Tell me, is Pakistan an anti nationalist? Not for the Pakistan. Ah, correct. Not for the Pakistan. You see, but for India, they are enemies. This is not the meaning that is used in the word. Anti-nationalist. You know what is the meaning of anti-nationalist? Huh? He is a citizen of India. You see? He is a citizen of India. He will be in India only. But uh, he will be working for our enemy country. Sitting in India. Being in India. You see? Indirectly, he will be working for whom? Our enemy nations. Those people are called as anti-nationalist. Did you get the point now? Huh? Did you understand? So, anti-nationalist means what? Not uh, enemies, uh, but uh, they are of their own nation. Being in the nation only, they are working against the nation. Did everybody understand? This is very, very important. Did you understand? Go for brother, home brother. Are you clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah. So they will be like I, I'll give you an example. They will be in Nepal only. Huh? They will be Nepal citizens only. But uh, without the knowledge of the government, secretly they will be working for whom? Enemy countries. You see, that is called as anti nationalist. Similarly, whenever the Bible uses the term antichrist. It is not applied to any Hindus, Muslims, or Jews, but it is speaking about the false Christians, those who are using the name of Christ. You see? Eh? And uh, misusing it. Uh, you see, these are the people who are called as Antichrist uh, from the Bible. So let us read the scriptures. First John. 2, 
18 and 19. Uh, go for brother, can you read? First John 2, 18, 19. First John 2, 18 and 19. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists. Huh? Even now there are many? Antichrists. Are you sure? Then that means Antichrist has already come. Huh? Already come during the days of apostles. Apostle John said there are already many Antichrist. That means during the days of the apostles itself, Antichrist was there. Then continue. Huh? So the apostle John gives the explanation who are those Antichrist. Observe it cleanly. Clearly, concentrate and observe it. Huh? Whereby we know that it is the last time. Hmm. They went out from us. Underline, they went out from us. That means, once upon a time, they were with apostles. They were with them only. But uh, they went out from them. Then. But they were not of us. Ah, they were not of us. Ah. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Ah, if they were of us, of the truth, they would have continued in the truth. Then. But they went out, and they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Uh, they went out because they wanted to make it clear that all not are God's children. This God permitted so that he might show who are the real children of God. Dear brethren, therefore, as per this scripture, we clearly come to know what is the meaning of Antichrist. That means they are in Christ, but they are working against Christ. That is the real meaning of Antichrist. That's what the Bible says. They went out from us. They were of us. They were with us. But they went out from us. Why? Huh? Isn't it? Because they were not of us. Therefore, dear brethren, huh? read them over Apostle Paul. Clearly tells also in Acts 20, 28 to 30. Uh, Acts 20, 28 to 30. Uh, can somebody read? Take it therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. But I know this, that after my departing some grievous wounds enter in among you, not to spare the flock. Also of your own sons, tell men of I, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. You see? What did Apostle Paul say? In the last days, what will happen to Simsa? Eh? My, after my departing, grievous wolf shall come to Simsa. You see? Grievous, dangerous wolf will come to Simsa. Then, they will uh, scatter the flock. They will take the people away from the truth of Simsa. You see how? He says, no? Huh? Also of your own self, uh, Shall men arise and speak false things? People from their own, among the Christians only, they will rise and they will speak false doctrines and draw the people behind them instead of behind Jesus Christ. So, dear brethren, this is the you see, quality and the character of the Antichrist that they slept slowly into the church spoke false doctrines and uh, diverted the real Christians into this world. Huh? Therefore, whoever has this type of uh, evil spirit, uh, you see, they are all actually of the Antichrist term. Read with her. First John 4, chapter 1 to 3, brother. First John 4, chapter 1 to 3. Uh, couple brother, Rome brother, can you read? Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. See? Thereby, ah, it says, don't believe every spirit. Why? Don't believe every doctrine, because so many wicked are there in this world. That's what God says now. So many people are there, wicked in this world. Then how do we check it? How do we test the doctrines? 
Huh? What is the meter? What is the caliber to check the doctrines? Read with continue. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Mm, and every every, spirit, huh? every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. You see, how many people believe this one? That Jesus Christ is come in flesh is of God. Huh? How many people believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Many people, you say, believe today that oh, God Himself came in on the flesh and died for us. That's what the Bible says. Now. What does the Bible say? Huh? Jesus came in the flesh and died, you see, for God. Dear huh? brethren, you have a continue with me. Continue with huh? And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Mm. And, mm. And, and, this, mm. and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Huh? Already in this world. So whosoever doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, he is not of God at all. Huh? How many Christians believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh? They all tell that God himself came and died for us and went off. He died in rose and went off. Huh? What does the Bible say? Huh? You see? Huh? Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of the Antichrist. Huh? Antichrist, what does the Bible say? Even now also it is in the world. Then imagine the other end. You see? First John 2, 22. Huh? It says now, uh, read with her. First John 2 22 with her. Can somebody read with her? Home brother, can you read? First John 2 22. Home brother? Yes, brother. Uh, first John 2 22 with her. 2 22. But it is happened unto them according to the true. No, no, brother. You are reading Peter. First John 2 22 with her. First John 2 22. Who is a liar, but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Mm. You see, who is Antichrist? He that denied that Jesus is Christ. What do the Christians believe? Jesus is God. But what does the Bible say? Jesus is the anointed. The Son of God. Therefore, can you imagine a person living for a period of 2,000 years? No. Can a person live? Isn't it? No. What did God say? In the day you eat the fruit thereof, you shall surely die. As per the Bible, nobody can live beyond 1,000 years. You see? So everybody has to die within the period of 1,000 years. Therefore, huh? Let us think uh, from this uh, scriptural angle and see that uh, if uh, Antichrist is a human being, if he is a person or not. How can a person be living for 2000 years? Definitely not. Therefore, this uh, Antichrist is not an individual human being, but it is a uh, system. What is it? It is a system, a corrupt religious system. Okay? Like for example, say we have the comparison of the uh, church and the Jesus Christ uh, to the body. You see? Uh, we, we are the body members of Christ. But who is the head? Jesus is the head. We are all the body members of Christ. Isn't it? And uh, this is one, uh, you see? One body, one head. Uh, this is a system, no? This is not literal body, little head, but this is some. Similarly, when we look for an antichrist, we need to look for a corrupt religious system, which is having a head, which is having a body members. Uh, huh? That means we need to see which is this corrupt religious system who is having, uh, you see, the head, and uh, who is having 
the body members also they have then and uh, you see apostle uh, paul writes this one in second thessalonians why did apostle paul write about the uh, antichrist in second thessalonians huh? why did he not write in the first uh, thessalonians book only you see we need to understand it a bit uh, important things uh, you see the reason is that huh? when uh, apostle paul wrote uh, first thessalonians he wrote about the second coming of lord jesus that uh, you see the second coming will be known to the church that's what apostle paul says let us read brother first thessalonians fifth chapter 1 and 2 first thessalonians fifth chapter 1 and 2 hmm. brother the times can still brother you have no need that i write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the lord so come as a thief in the night you see no need uh, for me to write about uh, second coming at all because you only know that how that uh, the day comes uh, like a thief in the night you see therefore based on the scripture many brethren in thessalonica understood that uh, jesus second coming already happened during their days only and the resurrection is already taking place to correct that concept only apostle paul writes uh, second thessalonians huh? second chapter and in the second chapter he clearly mentions that uh, before the second coming of jesus who should come uh, the antichrist should come therefore you will come into what uh, the bible says uh, second thessalonians 2 for we already read it he says he will come and sit uh, as god in the temple of god huh dear brethren who is this temple of god what is this temple of god you see we have studied about the temple of god from the uh, you see and uh, regular uh, discussions and all we had a subject about the church itself huh so who is the church is church a building can let me see who is going to answer is church a building brother no, no. Mm. then who is the church the followers of christ very good the followers of christ. who are they church who are they correct where where is uh, that church who are they we very good we we are the church that's what apostle paul says that we are the temple of the living god huh? read first corinthians you see 619 brother Hmm. What? No, you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which hmm. you have got, and not hmm. your own. Hmm. You see, don't you know that you are the temple of the living God? You means what? Church. So church is actually temple of living God. Now, if the Bible says that Antichrist is going to come and sit in the church, what does it mean? Huh? When the Bible says that he is going to come and sit in the temple, what does it mean? That means he is going to come inside the church. Huh? Church means what? Uh, you see, church means not uh, any building. Church means we, the people, Christians, uh, the believers, the followers, uh, the followers of Christ, dear brethren. Huh? So, where should the Antichrist come? Huh? As per this scripture, the antichrist should come among god's children only huh? so huh? he should come within god's children that is what apostle paul says in second thessalonians second chapter let us read the verse 3 now now you will come to the chapter read brother huh? second thessalonians second chapter 3 and 4 brother huh? <clears throat> let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed mm. mm. the son of perdition who mm. opposed and exalted 
himself above all that is called God or that is worship mm. so that he as God seated in the temple of God huh? so he seated as God in the temple of God now who is the temple of God church the we God's children that means he will come and claim to be God among where among God's children it seems children therefore Apostle Paul said this one only huh? in Acts 20 chapter. Now let us read that verse again. Now we will come to the understanding of that verse. First we read now Acts 20, 28 to 30. Uh, Gopal brother can you read Acts 20, 28 to 30. Hmm. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flocks over the, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Hmm. Feed to the feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that mm. after my departing shall grievous mm. wolves enter in among you. You see? What will enter? It seems, sir. Grievous wolf shall enter among you. You means what? Church. We are the temple of God. Among you only, who will commit him, sir? Wolf. Eh, they won't come more. In the form of wolf, they will come in the form of sheep. Wolf in sheep clothing to deceive the God's children. Then continue with the next. Huh? Not sparing the flock. Hmm. Also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. See, after your own self, among you only. Who will come? Huh? False preachers shall come. False teachers shall come. They shall speak wrong doctrines and draw the disciples after whom? Not before, not after Christ, but after them. Therefore, you see, this clearly says huh? what Apostle said in Second Thessalonians. That means huh? he will come. What? As a, as a God, he will sit as a God in the, where? In the church, it seems. You saw, no? You see? Very clearly. Among you, huh? we are the temple of the living God. So he's got to come and sit in the church. Now, where did Jesus say this one? Did Jesus ever say this one? Yes. Jesus told this one in two of his parables. This one you already studied. But let just uh, let us uh, recollect those uh, uh, you see points now. Let us read Matthew 13 chapter 31 and 32 with her. Matthew 31, sorry, 13 chapter 31 and 32 with her. Huh? Another parable hmm. he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom hmm. of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, hmm. which hmm. a man took and sowed in his field. Hmm. Which indeed is the list of all seed, but when it is crowned, it is the greatest among hops and become a tree, so that the bird of the air come and lose in the branches there. Ah, Jesus, he says a parable. The kingdom of heaven, not earth. That means the heavenly salvation. The church class is like a grain of the mustard seed, which a man took and sowed it in his field, which is all smallest of all the seed. But when it began to grow, it became great of all the herbs. It became a tree. So the birds of the air came and nestled it in it. What is the meaning of this one? We know this parable. Huh? Who is the man who sowed the seed? Who is this man? Tell me. Very good. Yes. Now, the man sowing the seed is a son of man. Now, what is the seed? What is the seed? Kapal brother, tell me what is the seed? Oh, brother, tell me. Word, huh? word is seed. Very good. Word, God's word. You see? Faith on God's word. This is what Jesus sowed on this earth. Huh? Jesus said, no, how should your faith be? Huh? It should be how much bigger? 
How much faith should we have in us? Mustard seed. Very good. Same thing. Faith on the Lord. This is what Jesus showed on this earth. Very, it was very minor thing, very small thing. But uh, huh? what happened is this? That uh, herb began to grow and it became a tree, it seems. If you see, actually, we don't find any mustard tree. No, nobody can find a tree, you see, but we can find what? Mustard plant. Then why Jesus is referring to a tree? That shows it is actually an abnormal growth. You see, the purpose of Jesus sowing the seed on this earth was that it should be like a small herb. Herb is not uh, much uh, smaller than a tree. But today, what happened? Uh, huh? This Christianity became a very huge tree, it seems. Huh? But then, you see, the largest uh, and highest uh, collection of funds, uh, you see, where does it happen, you know? It is not in Tripathila or Dharmasthala. Hmm? It is in the Great Vatican. The largest, highest funds are being collected in where? In the Vatican City, it is then. You see, but today, huh? you see, when uh, Jesus uh, spoke, uh, did Jesus, uh, you see, tell about these things, build a dynasty, uh, a lot of funds and all? No. Jesus said to be humble. Work with your hands, sir, and do. But today, the Christianity has become a very, very, what happened? Huh? Big tree, it seems. Such a big tree that what happened, it seems, sir? The birds of the air came and nested in the branches, sir. What is the meaning of bird in the Bible? Can anybody, anybody tell me? Devil. Very good. Devil. Jesus also told this one in the parable itself. Sir. You see? Huh? Matthew 13 chapter. When you're free, read the full chapter, Matthew 13. It comes there. Huh? Well, birds means devil. Where did the devil come in the settle? He settled in the church. <clears throat> Why? Because you were already there in the Hindu and the Muslim you see, temples and mosques. But where was he missing? Huh? He could not come into the church. But now, he made a way. When it began to grow into a big tree, he had a lot of opportunity to come and settle in the branches. They sell, no? Some people, they tell, no? Oh, this is our church branch. Branch, you see? He came and settled in all the churches. All the branches of all the churches. Read Revelation 18, 2. Revelation 18, 2. Read brother. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen. He is fallen. And it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a mm -hmm. case of every unclean and hateful bird. You see? Every unclean bird, every unclean doctrine. Huh? God's Holy Spirit. Huh? No, hold of every foul spirit. Huh? False spirit. Huh? No godly spirit. Huh? You see? Huh? All types of birds, all types of various huh? false doctrines. Where it came, it seems. Huh? It came into the church. Huh? This is what uh, Apostle Paul said. Now let us read that verse. We'll come to know very clearly. First Timothy 4, 1 to 3. First Timothy 4, chapter 1 to 3. First Timothy uh, 4, verse mm. 1 to 3. Mm. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God. So you oh, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. First Timothy, brother, read from the Bible. I think I have copied this on you. Sorry. First Timothy, fourth chapter, read from the Bible. First Timothy. Now the Spirit is speaketh speak expressly that in the later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. See, Wait, wait, one more minute. One by one, we'll see, brother. Thank you. So he says, huh? they will give heed, yes, to seducing spirits, sir. not Holy Spirit. Huh? Then, doctrines of devil, it seems, sir. So doctrines of devil means what? Huh? Then, where should the devil come and speak? Huh? 
the devil should come and speak in the churches itself. Then only the people will listen to their doctrine. No. Huh? Can uh, Satan come inside the church? Tell me. Can Satan come inside the church? Is it possible? Oh, brother. Gopal brother, tell me. Is, is it possible for Satan, Satan to come inside the church? It is possible. Yes. It is possible. You know, he did not come and visit and go. He came and settled there permanently. He put his throne inside the church. Read Revelation 2, 12 and 13. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write, These things said he, which had the sharp sword with two edges, and other works, where the dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. He? See? The even where Satan's seed is. Oh, oh. Huh? Satan has put a seed. Continue with that next. Huh? And the whole fast, my name, and has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my temple martyr, who was slain among you, the Satan dwelt. See, where Satan dwelt. That means Satan is dwelling in where? Inside the church. He has come and put his throne there. That is what the meaning of birds came and settled in the branches. It is through various doctrines, false doctrines. Now, which are the doctrines of devil? Huh? Let us read first is first Timothy four chapter huh? verse two and three. I read brother, come on, brother. Uh, first Timothy four chapter two and three. Read brother. What are the first doctrines? Let us see. Hmm. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Hmm. Having their... Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Next, huh? having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Hmm. Forbidding to marry. Ah, first point underline. Forbidding to marry. Now, is there anything wrong in getting married? No. No. There is nothing wrong. God himself created the concept of marriage. He only married for the first parents. Told to multiply and replace the earth. So, how can that be forbidden? You see, that is not forbidden in the Bible. You see, it is individual's choice to marry or not. Yeah, nobody can put a commandment saying you should not marry. Eh? Okay, what about a bishop? Can he marry or not? No. Oh, bishop will not marry, no? Oh, oh brother, what about bishop? Yes. He, can, he, he, can, can, he can marry he can, or he not? Can marry, he can marry one. Can he can marry. marry. Oh. <laughs> How many times? Only once. Huh? See, First Timothy 3 2. Let us read from the Bible. Gopal brother, read First Timothy 3 2. Can a bishop marry or not? A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Hey, yeah. What brother? Husband of one wife. That means he can be husband. That means he can marry. You see, where does the Bible say that bishop should not marry? That clearly says no bishop can marry. This is the doctrine of devil. That's what Apostle Paul said. You see, many people will come and tell lies saying forbidding to marry. Then continue with the Timothy. First Timothy 4 chapter brother. Verse 3 brother. Continue. Huh? And commanding to abstain from meats. Ah, command meaning to abstain from meat. Ah, not to eat meat. Correct? No? When does the Christians don't eat meat? When do the Christians don't eat meat? Uh, you are all Christians, no? We always, I, I can, I always you eat. You eat you, always. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for brother, how about you? Yes. I you eat always. Oh, you are all very good Christians. <laughs> you go and ask any Roman Catholic, you see, they don't eat meat on Good Friday. And every Friday, some people don't touch the meat on Friday. Why? Because Yo, Jesus died on the cross on Friday. Huh? And, uh, and during the uh, Lentil uh, period, 40 days fast, you know, they won't, uh, they won't touch at all. They say, Me too. You, you should not eat. Huh? What does the Bible say? Huh? What is running in eating the meat? Uh, see, continue. With them. Read their own list. Go on their own list. Huh? Which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of God. Thanksgiving. Yeah, God has created to eat it with thanksgiving. There's nothing wrong. Huh? 
Some people do know, oh, Monday they won't eat, Saturday they won't eat. Now, where is given the Bible? Huh? See, this is all the doctrines of devil. This is how huh? Satan came slowly inside the church. What the point now? Huh? See, what did we study now? We studied, what is the meaning of Antichrist? Antichrist is not a human being. It is a system, a corrupt religious system that uh, came inside the true church, that came among the true God's children. How did it come? It came in the form of uh, sheep clothing, wolf in sheep clothing. How? What was the medium they used? False doctrines. What are the false doctrines? How did the devil speak? Marriage. Then, not to eat the food. You see? Meat. Isn't it? So, this is how Satan began to come inside the church. This is how the great Antichrist system came inside the church. Now, let us read one more parable. Matthew 13, 33. Another parable spake he hmm. unto them. The kingdom mm. of heaven is like unto leaven, of mm. which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the mm. whole was leavened. See? Ah, three measures of meal until all was leavened. This also we have studied. Uh, now let me ask a question. What is the meaning of leaven in the Bible? Tell me. False doctrine. Very good. False doctrine. Matthew 16, 11. So, what happened here? It seems, sir. Little bit of false doctrine, little bit, not much, only little. Initially, they took it little, put it in three measures of meal. What happened? Entire meal got corrupted. Now you tell me, what are the three important things for the church? Home brother, which is the main important three things for the church? It was given by a lot. Tell me. Who, who can tell? Gopal brother, Ashish brother? Huh. Tell Om brother, tell. Um, I didn't understand your question. See, there are three meal, no? That means there are three important doctrines that are given by our Lord to the church. Which are the three important things? Tell me. Okay. Can somebody tell me? Faith, hope and love. Very good. Faith, hope, and love. See, what did she do? She put a little bit of false doctrine to these three concepts. Entire thing was corrupted. First, love. Huh? How should we love the Lord? How should we love the Lord? Tell me. With all our... Hmm, tell me. Mind with all our spirit, with all our yes. strength. Yeah, that is how we love the Lord. But today, what has happened? Huh? How many yeah, people in this world love the Lord with full strength, full mind, full soul? Huh? They come only for benefit. Huh? They put 10% as a tie so they may get more 90%. They do business with the Lord, a contract, 10% commission. If you bless me, I will again give you 10%. They think that I be giving 10% gives abundance of what? Huh? Blessings. Huh? What has happened today? Huh? Many people go to the church because of fear. If I don't go, God will punish me. You see, where is the love? Huh? Where is the true love? Tell me. No. Isaiah 29 13, brother. Read, brother. Isaiah 29 13. Huh? Can somebody read? Uh. <clears throat> Brothers, can somebody read? Are you there? 29.13? Correct. 29.13 For the word of the Lord was unto them a precept upon... No, 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 no. 29.13. No, no, no. <laughs> Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips to know, do honor me, would have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward of me is taught by the precept of men. See? 
Their fear is taught by the precept of men, teaching of men, fast teaching, sir. Huh? So this love went off. Then hope. What is hope? If we suffer for Christ today, today, we are going to reach with Christ. Huh? Who has this faith? Hope. You tell me. Everybody thinks that uh, you believe in Jesus, that's sufficient. I'll go to heaven and sing hallelujah with the Lord. Huh? What is the hope? Hope only went off. You see, the last faith. Uh, faith on what? Uh, the most holy faith, the Bible. That was the original faith of the church. Uh. But what happened? That faith also went off. Today, not many Christians have faith on the Bible. They have more faith on whom? Tell me, they have more faith on whom? Their pastors, uh, their teachers, than on the Bible. You see, uh, we were, you see, we are, we, you are seeing, no? How many people used to attend the classes? Huh? They all went off. Why? Because they don't have faith on the Bible. They don't want to li listen to what the Bible says. They want to listen to what their pastor says. Correct, no? That is what, what happened. Uh? These things got corrupted. Because they put false doctrine. You see, dear brethren, therefore, uh, this is how the Antichrist crept inside the church. Okay? So, we'll stop here and uh, we'll continue next week.